And now, stay tuned for the program that has been rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline invite you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Quiet Sunday. This was going to be a quiet Sunday for Henry Parker. Peaceful, calm, restful, away from the work and tedium of the office. Just the kind of Sunday Henry always looked forward to during the other hectic days of the week. And more than that, it was a special Sunday. For Henry's wife, Ruth, was vacationing at their lodge at Lake Arrowhead and wouldn't be home. That was the best part. And it was nice, too, to remember that tonight he had a date with Daphne. Daphne was tall and lovely. And Daphne seemed to understand that Henry liked to spend a nice, quiet evening. He was contemplating all this when the doorbell rang. Oh, never fails. The minute I get settled with a Sunday paper, that bird Adams wants to borrow the lawnmower again. Why, Daphne... Surprised? Daphne, what in the world are you doing here? What will the neighbors think? I had to see you, Henry. I was all alone. Well, look, come in. Quickly. Daphne, darling, you, you know you shouldn't come here. Why are you so frightened, Henry? Your wife won't be back for a week. Well, her friends are always dropping in. You know that. Why, why couldn't it have waited until tonight? I had to talk to you. It couldn't wait till then. Well, it... Is something wrong? Depends on you, Henry. Hmm? Do you love me? No, don't be silly, dear. You know I do. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm very tired of this situation. The only time I get to see you is when you can get away from your wife. Well, I've tried to explain about it. I divorce. want you all to myself, and if it can't be that way, I don't want you at all. That's why I came. I'm sick of meeting you in back alleys and dining with you in out-of-the-way places where no one will see us. You really loved me. You wouldn't treat me this way. I know. I, I know. It's it's not very fair. Of course it isn't. Well, can't we, can't we talk about it tonight? Yeah, yeah. That's it. We'll have a nice quiet dinner at the Willows. Henry, there isn't going to be a tonight. You've got to make a decision now. What was that? The garage door. Someone's out there. Could it be? Couldn't be Ruth. Then I'll stay. Daphne. Daphne, we can't take a chance. You better go. I'm staying, Henry. It's one of her friends. You'll start a lot of talk. I want an answer, Henry. Make up your mind. They're coming. Listen, listen, it's it's you, Daphne. Believe me, I I promise you I'll free myself from Ruth some way. But you've got to give me time. Now, Now, please go. All right, Henry. No, no, not the front door. Uh, Here, you, you better go down the cellar. The store here. You can wait down there at the foot of the stairs until they go. I- I'll call you. Remember what I said, Henry. Yes, dear. Of course. <sighs> Henry. Henry, where are you? Ruth. Henry. I... Oh, there you are, Henry. Ruth. <laughs> what are you doing here? You know very well what I'm doing here. I wrote you a letter two days ago asking you to join me at the lodge. But I, 
I wired you, Ruth. I, I told you I couldn't take the weekend off. I, I'm way behind at the office. How do you think I, I feel up there all by myself? Leona and Emily, Edith, all of them up there with their husbands, and I'm alone. They all want to know where you are. Well, I explained, Oh, Ruth. I feel like a fool. Well, I don't... Henry Parker, you're going back to Lake Arrowhead with me this very afternoon. I've had enough of your excuses. But I can't. Don't you see? I, I just... so little of you, Henry. I ask only what a wife expects, no more. You've got to go back to the lake with me today. Why, may I ask? Henry, today is our 10th anniversary. I told everyone you'd be there tonight. They'll think it's strange if you aren't. I'm sick of this pretense, Ruth. I I'm fed up with all your friends. Furthermore, I don't care what they think. Why don't you tell them, Ruth? Why, why don't you tell them I want a divorce? You're not going to humiliate me. They're all coming over tonight and you're going to be there. I won't be a laughingstock, Henry. Is that clear? Very clever. Very clear. No one knows I'm here in town. They think I'm still at the lodge. They, they all went on a picnic to Big Bear today and I told them I had a headache. Oh, Henry, they... They won't be back till tonight and... When they arrive, I want you to be there. That's bright of you, my dear. Why did you do all oh, this? Oh, I'd die if they knew I had to drive into town and beg you to come back with me. Well, what about the neighbors here? Oh, I, I took all the back roads, and when I reached our street, I came up the alley and drove into the garage. Oh, Henry, please understand. This means everything to me. I, I couldn't face them. You and your pride. Oh, please, Henry, it, it's only four o'clock. We can drive there in three hours. There's plenty of time. I told everyone to drop in from nine on. But you don't understand, Ruth. I'm not going. I don't care what your friends think. Don't you see? You're coming with me, Henry. That's all there is to it. Where are you going? Down in the cellar to get your overnight bag. Wait a minute. Oh, don't argue with me. Get your razor and things from the bathroom. All right, Ruth. All right, you win. I I'll go down and get the suitcase. I can get now, it. Stay away from that door. Henry! I told you not to open that door, you... Henry, you you overbearing, Henry, stupid... Henry, don't be silly. Let go Oh, you don't. I've Henry, had all of don't. you I intend to take. Ruth. Ruth. Daphne. Daphne, you better get some water. Here, let me... Now, what's the matter, Daphne? Daphne, why? What's the matter? Don't don't you see? We'd better. She. Don't don't you think? Just let her stay there, dear. There's no point in moving her now. You you mean she's. You mean she's. Yes, Henry. Ruth's dead. <laughs> Now, here's the exciting news so many of you have been waiting for. Prize winners in Signal's big $10,000 contest, which ended June 15th. Grand prize, the Buick Super Riviera, goes to Mrs. H.C. Ford, 10950 Ocean Park Avenue, Los Angeles, and will be delivered from the showroom of Wesson Buick Company on Western Avenue, Los Angeles. Second prize, Apex three-piece automatic laundry, washer, dryer, and ironer goes to Mrs. Helen M. Ryan, 2118 Whipple Avenue, Redwood City, California. Third prize, Frigidaire Deluxe Refrigerator, goes to Dorothy Finkbeiner, 965 North Church Street, Salem. Fourth prize, Frigidaire Home Freezer, goes to Donald Warner, 1821 North 103rd Street, Seattle. Fifth prize, Packard Bell 16-inch television console, goes to Ellen Burgoyes, Vista, California. Sixth and seventh prizes, Packard Bell 16-inch table model television sets, go to Don H. Brooks, 1301 Southeast 19th Avenue, Portland, and to Chet Newton, 6205 South 3rd Avenue, Phoenix. Eighth prize, Packard Bell 12 and one half inch television console, goes to Mrs. Fern Barclay, 3005 29th Street, San Diego. That's all the names time will permit now, but I'll be back later with more prize winners.
So Ruth is lying dead at the foot of the cellar stairs. And the quiet part of the Sunday is over, isn't it, Henry? Just like that. Her unexpected arrival home. Her irritating insistence that you go back to Lake Arrowhead with her. The argument. The cellar stairs. A flash of blinding rage. And it was over. Death is a strange, terrifying thing, isn't it, Henry? You've never even been close to it before. All you can do is stand there at the foot of the stairs and look dumbly at Daphne, too stunned even to think. Daphne, Daphne I, I didn't mean it. It, it. it was an accident. You, you saw it all, didn't you? There was nothing. She slipped. Stop it, Henry. But, but you saw it, and, and you can tell them how I it happened. I said stop it. I'm not going to tell them anything. Well, what do you mean? We've got Forget to... it. You pushed her. You know it. You mean you're going to tell them? Daphne, you can't. They'll... Wait, just... listen to me. Now, there's a way to get out of this gracefully. Get hold of yourself. I could hear her through the door. What did she say about sneaking away from the lake? Well, it, it was our anniversary, and she wanted me to be there. Her friends are away at Big Bear. They, they think she's still there at the lodge. No one knows she came down here. No. She wasn't seen. No. Henry, supposing she fell down the stairs at the lodge instead of here. What? While you were spending a quiet Sunday in town. I... I don't know how she could... No, wait, just a minute. Let me think. There's a long staircase up there. Yes, I remember it. What if her friends came back from Big Bear at 9 o'clock and found her at the foot of the stairs when everyone knows you're here in town, spending a quiet Sunday? But how could we get her up there? Well, we've got to try. It's the only way. I'll take her car up to the lodge. It's got to be found there. I can get to Arrowhead without being seen. I know that. Then I'll come back with you. Yes, but... What about Ruth? Well, you've got to take her up in the luggage com compartment of your car. Oh, there's one thing more. Somebody's got to know you've been in town all day. Yes, yes, an alibi. Where could you be for the next few hours? I, I don't know, Daphne. How can I... A movie. Fit? What about a movie? That's it. Pick one you've seen. Yeah. Yeah. And this Charlie Hartcastle, he, he goes to a meeting before church every Sunday. I'll pick him up, tell him I'm going to the movies. Yes, good. Buy a ticket, go in, then sneak out the side entrance. It'll be dark when we get to the lake. I'll meet you at the turn-off just below the lodge. Honk my horn twice, understand? Yes, yes, I understand. Well, we haven't much time. Come on, we've got to get her up to the car. Um, get the blanket over there. Yes. We'll wrap her in that. All right. Hurry, Henry. Here you are. Just throw it over. There. Ready? All right. We'll go right up the steps. What's that? I don't know. Something crashed through the window. Quick, back under the stairs. Hurry. Get down. What was I don't know. Wait. Oh, there it is. Baseball. Those kids next door playing baseball in the vacant lot. They'll be coming for it. Go out and give it to them before they try to come down. Crawl down and get it, Freddy. <gasps> Gee, I can't see down here. What if old sourpuss Parker is... Oh, oh. Hello, Mr. Parker. Hello. But, gee, gee whiz, we're sorry about the wind. Oh, oh that, that's all right, Freddy. Here, uh, here, let me hand the ball to you. Oh, you can't reach it, Mr. Parker. I'll come around and get it. No, 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 stay right there. I, I'll... Here! See? You can't reach up that far. I'll be down the second. Stay right there, I said. Gee whiz, I don't... Now, now, here, let me throw it up to you. Look out, Mr. Parker, you'll hit the other window. Here you are! Now, get out of here. Go on. Okay, Mr. Parker. Gee whiz, he's in a bad humor. Whew. That was close. Lucky, too. He's another one who can swear you were here today. Let's get her into the car. Just a quiet Sunday afternoon, Henry. Nothing to mar its peaceful stillness except the small matter of getting the body of your wife, Ruth, up to Lake Arrowhead, leaving it at the foot of the stairs at your lodge, parking your car where she always leaves it and returning with Daphne to Los Angeles, all without being seen. And, oh, yes, there's the matter, too, of Mr. Charles Hardcastle. And the... Get hold of yourself. Now, wait a minute. Maybe Hardcastle's lift already. He's shaking like a leaf. Shh. Hello? Uh, Charlie? Uh, this is Henry Parker, Charlie. Oh, fine. Well, uh, I, I was going to a show tonight, and I wondered if you'd like to join me. Oh, you're going to church? Oh, yes. Yes, of course, I forgot. Well, um, 
I'll drop you off, huh? It's right near the theater. Good, good. Yeah, uh, pick you up in a few minutes, huh? Oh, forget it, Charlie. Glad to do it. Goodbye. All set. Charlie will swear to the high heavens I stayed in town. What time is it? Uh, five o'clock. All right. You've only got an hour to spare. It'll take three hours to drive up there. Remember, I'll be waiting for you at the turnoff. All right, Daphne. At the turnoff. <laughs> There's no turning back now, is there, Henry? The body is right behind you now in the luggage compartment of the car as you drive slowly down the street to pick up Charlie Hardcastle. You're beginning to settle down a little, aren't you? The terrible shock that gripped you at first is beginning to wear off and you're thinking more clearly. Some of Daphne's quick, cool courage was there for you to borrow when you needed it most. When the panic made your knees weak, running blindly away to hide somewhere... At ten past five, you stop by for Charlie and nonchalantly begin to build your alibi as the two of you drive toward the church. Oh, don't be silly, Charlie. No trouble at all driving around this way. Well, nothing else to do, you know. Just taking in a show. Well, you kind of surprised me, Henry, calling up that way. Oh? Yeah, I've been a coon's age since we've been out together. Uh, by the way, where's Ruth? Oh, well, she's up at the lake for a little rest. <laughs> oh, I envy you that lodge. I'd like to get away sometime myself. Well, I'll tell you what, Charlie. Soon as Ruth gets back, why don't you and Sadie go up to the lake, huh? You're welcome to use our lodge. Hey, Henry, I'm sure Sadie will be thrilled to pieces. Ah, you've no idea what a great help you've been to me. Why, many times... I... What's that? Oh, oh, you better pull over. You got a flat, I'm afraid. Oh, no, no, it can't be. It can't. Up, pull over. Well, I'll drive you past the church first. No reason you should be late. Ah, don't be silly, Henry. You don't want to ruin a perfectly good tire. Let me have a look at it. Uh, casing's okay. You're lucky. Now, now, look, Charlie, it's only a few blocks to the church. You better run along. I'll fix it. Hey, you're talking to the best little old tire changer in the business. Come on, boy, where are the two? Go ahead, please, Charlie. Hey, what's the matter with you, well, Henry? I, I just don't want you to be late. It'll only take a minute. Besides, there's a signal service station in the next block. I wouldn't think of it. I'll get the keys out of the dash. Tools are in the luggage compartment, aren't they? We'll have her fixed for you. Wait. Wait, Charlie. I'll get the keys. I already got them. Give them to me. Hey, take it easy. I don't mind it a bit. I'll get the spare out of the luggage compartment. Let me do it, I tell you. Something eating you, Henry? Well, I, I'd rather do it myself. You sure are nervous. Right. <laughs> don't you see, Charlie? I, I just don't want to see you get all messed up and dirty before church. Now, now look, why don't, why don't you go up the street and, and have the traffic swing around me, huh? The street's awfully narrow here. Okay, Henry. If you say so. Here are the keys. It's worse than ever now, Henry. Worse even than the moment when you look down at Ruth, lying still at the foot of the cellar stairs. One more second and Charlie would have opened the luggage compartment, looked curiously at the blanket-wrapped, shapeless bundle for a moment. It would have been all over. But you can't waste time thinking about that now. Your hands won't work. You fumble clumsily with a jack, with the lug nuts on the wheel. Glance nervously at Charlie down the corner, directing traffic. A thousand years later, the tire has changed, and you're frantically trying to get the old wheel back in the luggage compartment when... Here, let me give you a hand with that, Henry. No, no, I I can get it. I'll get it. Now, wait. Wait a minute. There. All set? Yeah, yeah. You uh, you can go ahead and get in. Oh, oh, you left the jack out. Let me put it in the luggage compartment for you. No, it's it's all locked up, huh? I'll throw it in the back seat. All right, Henry. Better get in. Yeah. I I got the keys right here. (laughs) Wow, that was a tough break. Yeah. I... I'm sorry I got so jumpy, you know. A flat tire always throws me a little. Well, I don't think I was much of a help standing way out there. Sure got your clothes mussed up. Yeah, yeah, you you see, never would have done to have you show up at church this way. Gosh, gosh, it's too bad you can't go to the show with me. You know, Henry, I was thinking maybe I won't go to church after all. I wouldn't mind seeing a movie tonight. Oh, I I don't want to talk you out of going to church. Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, it was just a thought. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll let you off right at the door. Uh, 
What's playing at this show tonight? Oh, some second-rate picture. I'll give you a report on it, and you can take it in tomorrow night if it's any good. I hate to think I'd keep you out of church. All right, Henry. Don't worry. I'm going to church. <laughs> Next, please. How many? Oh, uh, could you tell me if the main feature is on, please? It starts in about six minutes. Ah, oh, good, good. I always hate to come in during the middle of a picture. How many, please? Oh, just one. Fifty-five, please. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have any change. Uh, can you break a twenty? I've done it before. Let me try. I'm awfully sorry. Uh, here you are. Two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, thank you. <laughs> Awfully hot tonight, isn't it? You can say that again next week. Uh, too warm to suit me. Earthquake weather, that's what I call it. Please, man, if you don't huh? mind. What? Oh, of course. Good night, miss. Get that guy. What a character. I'll see him in my sleep. <laughs> that's right, Henry. They'll remember you now. A minute later, you're lost in the comfortable blackness of the theater at an aisle seat near the side exit. You sit there long enough to make certain it's one you've seen, and then you slip out and hurry back to your car. It's six o'clock now, Henry. Just three hours left to make it. Sunday night. The traffic is coming the other way now, back into Los Angeles. Fifty. Fifty-five. Sixty miles an hour. And always you're careful to watch the rearview mirror. It would never do to be picked up for speeding, would it? Eight thirty. Mate, wonderful time. There's the turn off ahead. here. Oh, you made it, darling. Is everything all right? Yeah, I think so. Did anyone see you? No, I was awfully careful. You better go ahead. I'll follow you. Have you been up to the lodge? No. Hurry, go on ahead. We haven't time to talk. the lodge. Where does she usually leave the car? Uh, over there, the side. Better put it over there now. No. We'll take her in first. You got the key? Yeah, right here. All right. Hurry up. Open the luggage compartment. Yeah. The lodge is pitch dark, darling. We made it in time. <laughs> Now for more prize winners in Signal's big $10,000 contest. Ninth and ten prizes, Packard Bell 12 and one half inch table model television sets, go to W.M. Johnstone, 318 21st Street, Oakland, and to Philip Cutts, 2548 South Bronson, Los Angeles. Eleventh and twelfth prizes, O'Keefe and Merritt Gas Ranges, go to Ben E. Lang, 1238 North Crescent Heights Boulevard, Los Angeles, and to Mrs. Carita C. Wiebe, 4002 North Alaska, Portland. Thirteenth prize, Frigidaire Electric Range, goes to F.D. Lafoon, 3621 Riviera Drive, Pacific Beach, California. Prizes 14 through 23, 10 solid gold Helbros wristwatches, go to Lauren H. Brinton, Los Angeles, W.F. Huff, Seattle, Leo J. Kurzik, Long Beach, Ada P. Kilmer, Whittier, Mrs. Harry W. Kochman, Los Angeles, Julius S. Orozco, Sacramento, Mrs. Marisa Osborne, Dunlap, California. Clarence W. Todd, Portland. Mrs. Sarah L. Trogan, Portland. And Elizabeth E. Washburn, San Diego. 
In addition to tonight's 23 top awards, 177 other persons won valuable prizes and will be notified personally. Within the next few days, a list of all 200 winners will be posted at Signal Service Station. So you made it, Henry. The lodge is in complete darkness, and you're sure there'll be plenty of time for you and Daphne to arrange Ruth's accidental fall at the foot of the steep staircase. Leave quietly, lock the door, and sneak back down the dark road to the highway before any of your wife's friends arrive. It's simple, isn't it? You're sure your alibi will hold. You're certain you're safe now. And strangely, the horror that gripped you when you first looked down at Ruth's body is gone. The two of you remove the blanket. Carry her up the stairs to the front door of the lodge. Where's the key? I got it right here. Just a minute. Oh, where's that darn keyhole? Better get a match. No, wait a minute. Here you are. Oh, oh, good. I'll go first. Easy now. Not so fast. Follow me. I know my way in the dark. Where are the stairs? Over this way. Henry. Who turned on the lights? Surprise! 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 Henry! Surprise! Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Now that the winners in Signal's $10,000 contest have been announced, Signal Oil Company wants to take this opportunity to say congratulations to you who won. And to all of you who entered so wholeheartedly into the spirit and fun of the contest, our sincere appreciation. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Don Randolph, Mary Jane Croft, and Margaret Brayton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with music by Wilbur Hatch. Tonight's story, Quiet Sunday, by Bernard Girard and Zane Mann, was first heard on The Whistler on June 10, 1946, was repeated this evening in response to many requests, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblances to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at the same time next Sunday another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>